Okay, it's time trial day at the Giro d'Italia. I'm excited, the riders are nervous. Let's go and see exactly what tech they're using. Come on. Now, one of the things I really enjoy about checking out time trial bikes of riders is their arm rests or forearm rests that they have on their extensions because, well, the level of detail they go to is quite incredible. So first up, bike of Miles Scottson here of Group Armar FDJ. His resemble kind of the worn out furry part of Velcro. That's the sort of probably the best description I can give of it. So he's going to get a little bit of comfort there. Hopefully his uh, arm hair isn't too sharp, otherwise he could get stuck in place, I jest. Uh, whereas if I move along all the way to uh, Ramon Sinkledam, he's got almost like a neoprene style. So it's quite traditional, but well, sometimes even covered with a it's kind of a fabric on there, but they've done away with that. Then underneath the actual forearm rests themselves, if you look underneath the bike of Sinkledam, well, he's got a one-piece aluminium's kind of built-up stack system, whereas Scotson, he's got a number of different spaces in there. So possibly his isn't the same height. I don't know, I didn't bring my tape measure today, and I don't want to go and pester the mechanics, but there's food for thinking. I think this looks much better, really, because, well, it's a one-piece bit of kit. Now, the time trial bikes here, they don't have complete up-to-date 9170 group sets. Instead, well, Scotson, he's got a 9070 Durace Di2 rear mech paired up with the 9150 uh, front derailleur here. So that's both DIT compo Di2 components, but they work together in harmony. Uh, but importantly, they've all got the Elite Chrono TT aerodynamic water bottle cage. No bottle fitted, but believe me, it is a different shape. Now, this year's Giro, there's a few riders who are riding naked. No, 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 not that kind of naked. By naked, I mean on their handlebars on their time trial bikes. So specifically, we've got this one here, the bike of Rota of uh, the CSF Bardiani team. And, well, on his Gertiotti here, you can see he's got no kind of grip whatsoever on his bars. Most riders out there, they tend to either opt for a little bit of grip tape or even some normal handlebar tape, depending. But it's very unusual to see this. I do hope they're wearing mitts because when your hands get a little bit sweaty, like what I tend to get like, well, you begin to start slipping on the bars themselves. So he's saving himself a little bit of weight there as well as possibly being a bit more aero too. Moving backwards, check out the Selly Italia Kronos saddle. A nice short stubby one with a bit of a cutaway there in the middle. So you can see there's a channel there with a honeycomb style effect in there. And then, well, it's got like an aerodynamic fairing around the back of it. I love this because I remember, pretty sure it was Selly Italia back in the early 90s made a saddle and that actually had like a lumbar support on the rear but that was actually banned by the UCI because riders could push back on it just to eke out a little bit more power none of that going on here but equally as cool then I saw this bike here and I thought to myself that's a bit unfair the rest are all on mechanical and this lad well he's got electronic group set and then I was like well hang on there's a load and load of wires going on what is this all about well the team are actually sponsored by uh, Favero and they're using their Asioma pedals here. So that's a power meter pedal system. So that's actually what was charging up when I saw the lights flickering away in the background. I do like these bikes actually. Oh, a shout out as well. The tyre sponsor is CST. Now, many of you out there won't have actually heard of them, but it stands for the Chen Shin Tyre Company. And they're actually the biggest manufacturer in the world of bicycle tyres. Or well, they certainly were a few years ago when I worked uh, specifically in that kind of area in the industry. And they actually employ 20,000 people. So if they're not the biggest, let me know down there in the comment section exactly who is. Just going to check out the disc wheel here of Bahrain Merida, the Fulcrum 360T, as you can see, because it's a completely filled in wheel. Now, firstly, we've got a Continental Podium TT Pro Limited on here, so it's fitted up again with a latex inner tube, but importantly, in a 25mm width. Now, back when I was racing on the track in my heyday, if you like, we were using these, but in a 19mm or a 21. I can't quite remember, but they were so much thinner. But what I love is that they still have the same sort of needle file pattern to them. And I think that's great that they're continuing that. It's obviously a tried and tested one. They're always great for me. Now the bearings fitted inside of the hubs here, they've got CULT, which stands for Ceramic Ultimate Level Technology. So we've got ceramic bearings in there, and apparently, according to the testing that was done on these wheels, the wheels themselves were spun up to 500 revolutions per minute, which is pretty quick, and then let go free. Now, there was no drivetrain attached or anything like that to try and add any resistance, but the wheel itself continued to run 
for 45 minutes. So nine times longer than a standard bearing competitor, so that would have been five minutes. And that's going some, let's face it. So super smooth, and they're not a sealed bearing, so they're a angular contact bearing, if you like. So you can see here, by the little grub screw there, you can actually adjust minutely and really finely tune in the actual level of resistance of those bearings. I do like a wheel like this. Plus, this one sounds cool too. Listen to that. It sounds like an old drum or something like that, like a snare drum. Phil Collins, eat your heart out. All right, I'm here with a bike of Roger Kluger of Lotto Sedal, a rider who is a true powerhouse. He can mix it on the road, he can mix it on the track, world champion on the track, world tour rider on the road, and, well, he's riding a grand tour. So this is his time trial bike, and, well, he's using a tubeless front tyre here, so it's a Vittoria Corsa Speed, and it's in 25mm width, but looking at it, it does, in actual fact, look quite a bit wider. I'd say up to a 27 or even a 28mm. But on the rear, he's still using a tubular tyre because Campagnolo, they don't actually make a disc wheel suitable for clincher tyres. So there we go on that one. And then to keep him nice and comfortable when he's riding on the rivet, that is an old-fashioned term, by the way. Now, I believe it is because back then, when the term came around, rivets were actually through the nose of the saddle, and that's why it's called that. Because when you're riding on the rivet, you're riding on the nose. So for this reason, he's got himself a Selly Italia SLR tri-saddle, and it's got just a little bit of extra comfort there on the front. So. Hopefully it's going to relieve a little bit of pressure when he's riding on the rivet. I love that saying. Here with the bikes of Tosh van der Sander and Jasper de Burst. And well, this is where Custom TT Tech has gone to the extreme. Just check out these forearm rests here on the tri bars. Look how high up they go on the side. This makes me think that these two riders in particular, they want to get super narrow at the front end. But well, the physics and the anatomy that they've got is telling them otherwise. So basically their body is trying to push them outwards. But with these, it's helping keep them nice and aero there at the front. So they're able to basically cheat through the wind a little bit easier, if you like. Although they're not cheating, but you know what I mean. And then the actual base bar of the handlebars too, they've got a little bit of tape over the actual holes here that the bolts would go on to fix the extensions in place. Meaning that the air is just going to go nice and smoothly over there. Not going to go inside, cause any drag or turbulence. Good work. Right, I'm here with a time trial bike belonging to the Israel Cycling Academy, this beautiful De Rosa. I've got to say, the paintwork is fantastic. We've got tiny little bits of glitter underneath the clear coat and, well, all right, yeah, yeah, I know, you want to know about the tech on it. Okay, first up, the Vision Metron chain set. It's absolutely beautiful because it's just covered in carbon. It's like a carbon shell over the top of it. And it's not a single ring, although you could be mistaken for actually thinking that at first glance. Well, it's obvious it's not. We've got a front derailleur fitted, but on the inside mounted is a 42 tooth chain ring up with this 54 and well it's bolted on just like on a Shimano Durace for instance from the inside but it's almost invisible because you just simply can't see it. I'm a big fan of that matched up too with a KMC chain in that blue and black. Oh yes I love it. Right, we've got a brand new Vision Metron time trial disc wheel here. So it's so new, it doesn't in fact have an actual name. I've just been chatting away to someone from Vision behind the scenes. And well, I've been given some important stats on it. So it's 12% stiffer than the previous wheel. And importantly too, 15% lighter, which is going some. Now, those savings, you know, the 15% lighter, it may not sound that much, but this one has actually been designed around a 25 millimeter width tire. So there is some extra material there too. Also, a little birdie has told me that apparently they're gonna be launching a tubeless ready version around about the Tour de France time. So I'll be keeping my eyes peeled there too because currently nobody that I know of anyway is using a tubeless version of a disc wheel. Although front wheels, we're starting to see those creep in here and there too. And then moving forward to the actual head tube of the bike here, you can see it's not the neatest looking thing, but the reason being is that pros, well, they're so much more flexible than us, so they're gonna get extra low on the actual front end, so the purpose-built design covering here, or housing if you like, isn't used, hence the reason why we've got the sort of visible cables that would normally run just underneath the shrouding and look nice and tidy. Right, scrap what I just said about no teams out there using a tubeless disc wheel, because I forgot that the team of EF Education First, well, on their Vision disc wheels, they too actually already use Vittoria Corsa Speed tubeless tyres, so my bad on that one. Moving forward, I've just spotted something on the actual valve stem here on this Metron front wheel coming from Vision 2, and it's kind of a, a casing or a housing, and then the valve nut is done up tightly in place there onto the rubber bung itself, because Valves have an annoying tendency to rattle while you're riding along. And whilst riding a time trial, a rider is, of course, on their own, unless they're riding a team time trial, and you're going to notice any rattles or clicks so much more in that case, and they absolutely drive you wild. So that's why they will have done that. 
Right, just behind me is the bike of Tanel Kangart, the Estonian who rides for EF Education first. And being fitted onto his standard road bike is in fact a pair of clip-on aero bars because there's a good chance that during today's time trial stage, he's actually going to be changing from his traditional low-profile time trial bike onto one of those. Just a normal road bike with added-on clip-on bars. I like that. Here with the bike of Hugh Carthy of Team EF Education First. This is the Cannondale Super Slice, a bike that certainly stood its test of time. It's been out a while now, so a few things of note to point out. First up is the Ceramic Speed Oversized Pulley Wheel System. So you can see here that these pulley wheels or jockey wheels that many of us know them as, they are oversized and the idea behind that is that the chain doesn't have to take quite as tight a route through the actual rear derailleur cage there. Instead, it can flow a lot more smoothly, meaning you can free up a bit of extra power there and look at this sort of white coating on the chain well that's the ceramic speed ufo drip style uh, chain lubricant there again it has proved through their testing to be just a little bit quicker than other lubes which tend to gather dirt and just slow you down and then moving forward we've got a tax water bottle cage and it's got those dimples in there of course dimple technology introduced into the cycling world through zip with their disc wheels it's been passed on to all sorts of components including this bottle nice and narrow shape and uh, it's not going to hold the wind at all it's just going to bounce it around it they've also got what i think a CNC machined extension mounts there. It's not the standard bit of equipment that would come with the handlebar setup, but they've been done so just to get you in that perfect position. Oh, and look at this behind the fork crane. Cheeky little emblem of some sort. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Let me know in the comments. Strange. Here with the bike of Bauke Mollimer of Team Trek Sega Fredo and fitted onto his bike is some pretty cool bits of tech so naturally I've got to point them out. First up we've got a lightweight Autobahn disc wheel in the rear but why exactly? Well the team sponsors of their wheels is Bontrager and they don't actually make a disc wheel hence the reason why they've got this fitted but they actually split their choices between lightweight and zip. This one the Autobahn it weighs in at under 800 grams for a disc wheel which is quite frankly incredible. I remember picking one up for the first time and just being blown away and it's well unmistakable due to its design isn't it let's face it moving forward we've got a tri spoke fitted and that one is from pro some handy bits of black tape here over the logos they've covered that up but the eagle eye of john cannings doesn't go unnoticed let's face it there too also we've got a one by setup being used here so a big old chain ring on the front i say big old it's only a 52 but we've actually got it paired up with a 10 tooth gear on the back there so it still does give you a pretty big gear and then well we've got a chain catcher fitted onto the front derailleur hanger here you can see the mechanic they've actually had to file away and just take a chunk of aluminium out of it just to get it to work with it just perfectly i do like a bit of mechanics intuition Right, I'm a little bit stumped with this one and I'm going to need your help. Who makes this tri-spoke as used by the Movistar team? I honestly don't know. Could it be an old head? Get involved in the comments, let me know. We can see here on the roof of the Bahrain Merida car is the bike of Domenico Pozzavivo. Just check out where his handlebar extensions are. They are actually based underneath the base bar because he's not the tallest of riders, let's say. So to get nice and low, that's the extremes that the mechanics have had to go to. I could obsess all day over details like this, and I do. It's great. There we are, some absolutely brilliant bits of tech from here at the Giro d'Italia. Let me know your favourite bits of tech down there in the comments section below. Personally, I can't put my finger on it much as I would like to, so get well and truly involved in the comments. Don't forget also to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big old thumbs up. And why not check out the GCN shop too at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got a whole heap of goodies for you to check out. And now for two more great videos from the Giro d'Italia, click just down here and just over here. It's starting to rain. It's starting to rain.